Greetings! Today I've got a Sanyo Pro X Multiverse projector to take apart. Um, now this um, I got it off of a cardboard cell and it served for a couple of times and the lamp gave up so um, I figured uh, that's uh, as much as uh, of a use I can get out of it. So now it's uh, time to take it apart and look at uh, what's inside and um, what uh, what sort of parts I can salvage from it. And the main thing I'm after is uh, the optics uh, inside it. I'm curious to see what sort of uh, optics arrangements uh, is there inside. So that's probably gonna be the most uh, interesting part. So without further ado, um, let's uh, take out all the screws that are uh, marked with an arrow and see if, uh, if it comes apart. There we go, uh, that came off nicely, this is just some plastic uh, mouldings to press the buttons on on here. All surface mount buttons and yeah the whole thing is metalized inside so uh, that's all for shielding so the whole thing is uh, conductive somewhat uh, to reduce the reduce the RF interference um, but yeah let's uh, let's press on because right now uh, don't see much interesting thing is I see already three uh, separate uh, identi identical looking um, uh, flex, flex connect connectors so would that be to three separate RGB uh, screens um, that's yet to be found out but I suspect that's what it is before we continue uh, might as well take the lamp uh, assembly out because usually it's a high pressure uh, high pressure lamp this is what goes and this is what went in this projector so this is the lamp assembly Do I need to unscrew those things? Probably. Okay, this is a Osram high pressure lamp that's uh, that's failed. I'm not sure what I'll do with this. Uh, you can see the high uh, high voltage connectors in here with the sleeving to uh, uh, to eliminate uh, the the risk of discharge and uh, and whatnot. So yeah, that's uh, this will probably probably be a separate video. I'm 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 thinking what uh, why does it have to be so complicated? Why can't they use just a high um, high wattage uh, halogen lamp or something along those lines but uh, okay anyways let's put this aside uh, one more connector okay the PCB is free and we've got yeah, some interesting ICs uh, Pixelworks uh, BGA Uh, here is a nice module. This is uh, this looks like DC to DC converter with two big coils, uh, possibly um, a ton and a half of uh, electrolytic caps. Uh, the whole board is populated with electrolytic caps. Interesting here. Uh, we've got uh, uh, two uh, through hole caps bodged on. Uh, can you see it? They've just been uh, hot snotted onto the board and uh, then the legs have been bent over and it's been connected into places. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of a afterthought on, on the whole design. Uh, but yeah, so far this has been very nicely made. You can see everything is uh, metal threaded inserts. 
on all the plastics and whatnot, so uh, that's quite nice. Okay, there's uh, quite a bit going on over here. Right, okay, I'm already seeing some really interesting optics uh, happening over here. Um, so this is this is where the lamp sits and I've got a nice assembly over here with uh, something happening over here and some sort of, uh, I guess, a Fresno lens uh, here and the optical path uh, goes through here. So this will be quite interesting to see what's um, how does the light go through this. So let's maybe take what we can out. Here we've got I'm not sure what to make of it, but uh, th those are the three flexes that came off the board, and uh, I think this is going to be RGB uh, uh, sc screens, um, LCD screens, or, or whatnot. And the light from the lamp gets split somewhere over here and gets fed into three screens over here, and then it gets combined and projected out. Okay, so right uh, straight away. Um, there is a lens. That was off camera. So there is a lens over here, and three filters. Right, this is um, this is quite interesting. So, looking at the light path from. Uh, from where the the lamp is. First of all, we've got here uh, some sort of lens. Um, then there is another lens and another lens. Which let me see if you can see that. But you can see that there is a angled pattern on the lens, and I'm not sure what is that doing. Um, but it seems like the the lens has been sandwiched from uh, from a bunch of prisms. Um, but yeah, um, this is unusual but then what's happening uh, it's uh, the light is coming through here uh, and this is a I guess what's called a dichroic mirror uh, which uh, lets some of the light through but uh, one of the wavelengths uh, goes through here bounces off of a mirror here and goes through a lens uh, um, CC, uh, LCD sensor and into a, uh, I guess what's gonna be here, a beam combiner. Then, what's left uh, of the of the light uh, goes through here. Then yet again another wavelength gets bounced back through here, uh, goes through another uh, another lens and another sense um, LCD. And what's what's left uh, goes straight through. Bounces off of one mirror, another one, and into the um, LCD and uh, uh, and the lens into the beam combiner from from this side. So quite an interesting um, arrangement. Now let me shine a light through. Maybe you can. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see, but. Um, Clearly, the the blue light goes through this path over here. Then we've got uh, a little bit of a yellow tint. So uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be. Uh, I think that's going to be the green uh, the green light path uh, over here, uh, and the red one goes uh, all the way around. And I, I looking at it, um, I'm, it's not that visible on the camera, but I can actually see. A bit of a red, uh, red tint on here. So uh, that's uh, blue, uh, green, and red going around. If I shine the light uh, through the lens into the middle, um, if I get it just right, you can see the. The red bouncing through here and hitting here. Uh, this is the green area and the blue comes out here. So yeah it's a it's interesting. I'm I'm I wanna see what will happen uh, 
I want to see if I can take this out in the whole piece and play a little bit more with it. Um, here we've got uh, the top cover from here that I uh, took out and um, those uh, those little glass uh, things are filters and they uh, produce diff they do different uh, different wavelengths uh, as well. So this is uh, this looks like yellow actually, uh, not a green. Uh, one of them seems blue. All those fil filters, by the way, those mirrors, they do come out. They they are all individually serialized. They've got a serial number on them, and you can see um, if I they they bounce off one wavelength and uh, let through everything else. So you can see this one has got really distinct blue tint uh, when it's reflecting. It's reflecting blue light, but when I bounce it off, uh, it's it's letting through quite a bit of uh, red and uh, green, hence the yellow uh, light path. You can see it gives a distinct yellow color, so it's it's bouncing off on only the blue uh, the blue color. The next one down the path is is actually pinkish. So um, when I try to bounce it off, the light from a flashlight is actually swamping the camera, but uh, yeah, it's you can see it's giving off the pink uh, pink hue. Okay, uh, that's an interesting piece. Um, so this is a lens that's made out of squares, and it's, the eyes hurt from looking at it. Um, so what this probably does is uh, you can see it pixelizes the picture really nicely. Um, it makes the the beam from the from the lamp go into a uh, rectangular shape because it's uh, whatever angle you you look at it, it produces a, a a nice square. So if I shine a light through it. it will sort of uh, produce a square image so it focuses all the light into a uh, into one square Okay, interesting. And it's all in its own assembly, so I guess this has to be really precisely aligned um, in order to make the whole thing work. Um, that's the only thing I can make out of it from the fact that it's uh, it's in in its own assembly with a lot of screws and and whatnot. And we've got one more lens. There's quite a bit of optics in here. Okay, there is uh, another one rectangular shaped thing. So yeah, another, it's all glass. This is probably one of the reasons why this, those things are not uh, cheap, that they are expensive. Um, okay, and this is the this is the interesting part. So we've got a smooth uh, on one side and not so smooth on the other side. And what is this doing? So there was this. Uh,
I can see slightly different color. Maybe, uh, maybe that's uh, helping to split different colors into different bands. Because I can see uh, it's swamping the camera, but I can see green and red bands on my hand uh, reflecting from this. So uh, perhaps that's got something to do with uh, with the color split. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting piece of uh, optical stuff. Okay, here we have a lens assembly. I wonder if I can make it into something useful. Here is the the money shot. Uh, the I guess the most optically interesting part. So this combines the beam from uh, all four sides. So if I shine a light through it, here we have. blue, green and red. Green is kind of the least prominent as being green. Red is kind of obvious and blue is really obvious. Uh, just the just the green one is a little bit off but hey Right, uh, there's two more blower fans in here, so that's why this was so noisy. So there is a separate blower fan for each uh, each color. So there was one over here with a channel blowing uh, right against the uh, the LCD screen uh, filter thingy and there's one for each color so there's uh, two more blower fans which seems a little like like much to be honest a uh, really nice IC connector uh, with a built-in filter uh, common mode uh, filter and terminated so that's a keeper that's worth keeping for something Let's take a look at the at the beam combiner uh, thing. So maybe first I'll take off the sensor, well not sensors, the LC filters. So there we go. Each of those is uh, effectively an LCD screen, responsible just for one uh, one color. And yeah, uh, each color goes through separate path and through filters. Only, for example, in this case, only the green light goes into this and this by. Um, turning the polarization of the uh, liquid crystal uh, it will either let the light pass through or not and uh, that's how, how it uh, it can control intensity of each pixel of uh, individual uh, individual color and create uh, all the col colors in uh, on the screen so let's maybe let's take all of them off now the, all those three will be identical, so the, I don't think there's any uh, any difference between them, uh, red, green, and blue. Even though they're marked, this is green, this one's marked red. Maybe there might be a little bit of difference. Maybe there's a different coating applied uh, applied to this uh, to the to the glass or something along those lines, but. Essentially, they all do the same thing. Oh, that's the green.
green one, sorry, red one. And the blue. It's all metal, metal casting, so it's all very precisely mounted. Uh, I'm interested in the prism inside, so let's keep unscrewing things. Okay, this is uh, made out of something. It feels really light. It feels like magnesium, actually. Um, yeah, I, th I, I think this is magnesium. Um, but okay, we can try to burn it sometime later. But so we have got a really interesting piece of uh, optics. So it's a beam combiner prism type of thing. Which I'm not educated enough to say something smart about it, but other than it is really interesting and I'm trying to get to the actual thing but uh, it seems very well contained in the in the metal oops something fell out okay a filter so are there f more filters in here where did that come out from If one fell out, I'm presuming there will be two more falling out somewhere. It seems like that uh, right after assembly, this has been either glued or soldered in uh, in those spots, so uh, it shouldn't be disassembled. So I think I'm going to resort to brute force in here. So those are definitely glued. OK, 
really this has been made in a way that it's not meant to come apart another filter and another filter and a piece of uh, prism that's mounted in between two two pieces of uh, aluminium uh, but I think it has been glued in place so uh, I'm not too sure I'm going to attempt to unglue it out of it oh, there's no point I can play with it in this form but it's uh, it's interesting that oh, well, let me put it on a lower brightness so This is blue. This is yellowish. This is blue. This is yellowish. So this is doing some filtering as well, so I'm wondering how is this made? So I'm wondering if I shine from, yeah, if I shine from the side, now I'm seeing red. It's kind of swamping the camera. And green and blue. Green, red, blue. So yeah, this is, it's interesting, I could have some fun with lasers with that. Okay, uh, I'm kind of blinded right now uh, by the flashlight. Okay, that's, uh, that's as far as it goes on this one day, one way teardown. Um, lots of interesting uh, optics and uh, filters and lenses and all kinds of thing thingy majigs uh, that I'll try to make a use out of somewhere later on. Uh, but uh, for the time being, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, see you uh, in the next video. Uh, if uh, if you wish, please do subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Um, as far as this one, that's it. Take care.